Week nine has arrived. The Lake Orion Dragons take on the Saline Hornets with playoff implications on the line. We've got it all for you here on Orion Neighborhood Television and on the NFHS streaming service. Pre-game is underwritten by Sarah Chrysler Dodge Jeep and Ram of Lake Orion, part of the Sarah Automotive family, offering new and used car sales, service on all makes, parts, accessories, and a state-of-the-art collision and repair facility. Stop by at 3800 South Lapeer Road or give them a call at 248-393-2222. Good evening, everyone. I'm Doug Corliss with Chris Fritching. Chris, it's week nine. Coach Bell put it best two weeks ago. Went out, you got a home playoff game. They did it. They started that last week by beating Farmington. It's a pretty tall task ahead of them tonight. Absolutely. I mean, go one and all, right? I mean, it, that's the mantra of most coaches at this point in time. You know, win the day, win the week, win the game tonight. But Lake Orion tonight's got to play their game. And that, what that means is a ball control, very methodical type of offense. They got to do what they can to be able to keep that Celine offense off the field and you know they can't get into a shootout with Celine because that will not not be not be good in my, in our opinion so um, you know, Lake Orion turned the ball over twice last week against Farmington. They simply cannot do that tonight. So simply, again, win the play, win the quarter, win the half. Ultimately, hopefully that wins the game for them. And it sounds simple tonight, but that's got to be the task at hand tonight. Celine comes in. They were dealt a major blow. They had to forfeit their first three wins. That being said, in the five games since, they've outscored their opponents 250 to 31. Quarterback Tommy Carr has slipped seamlessly into the shoes of his older brother now at Notre Dame. They're a dangerous team. They're a terrific team. And, and uh, yeah, the transition not only from one car to the other car, yeah. but also the transition from longtime head coach Joe Polka to their new yeah. coach, Kyle Short. Um, the results have pretty much stayed the same, you know. Uh, yes, they had to forfeit those first three games to, due to that ineligible player, but bottom line, on the field, they won those games. Yeah. They won those games. They would be 8 0 otherwise. Um, the most points they've given up in any game this year is 21 points. The last four games that they've played, two shutouts, they've got three shutouts on the season if you count those games as played games, those forfeited games, and they've only given up 10 points in those last four games. And so, but since those 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 forfeits took place, they've averaged 50 points a game and only given up 6.2 points a game. So they've used the forfeits, I think, as a motivation to say, you know what, we're for real. And yeah. uh, this is a good football team with not a lot of weaknesses. And this is week nine. Selection Sunday comes up this weekend. In our division, Lake Orion, Oxford, and Adams are all six and two. Oxford is the Red Division champion. There are seven wins you got to have, as Coach Bell said, for a home game. This game tonight is important for a lot of teams, not just Lake Orion. Yeah, I mean, it's, it is all about playoff points right now, and obviously this game between these te two teams will result in some terrific playoff points for the winner. Currently, Lake Orion is eighth overall in Division I in playoff points. Um, the, currently, the six and two teams that are just behind Lake Orion are, are Rochester Adams, Oxford, Brighton, Rockford, Davison, and Cass Tech. Um, Celine is 17th in overall in playoff points. So uh, Clarkston, Northville, For, uh, Dearborn, Forts, and Novi and East Kentwood are all five and three teams just like Celine. So um, a lot of critical games going on in Division I football tonight. They're going to have a big effect on how the pairings come together uh, on sa Sunday, how the, the, the point system comes together. And so that selection Sunday, which, by the way, is at 4.30 this week, yeah. this year, excuse me, on Sunday. Um, Looking forward to that tonight, but needless to say, uh, the game, the winner of tonight's game, will have a tremendous effect on playoff points and and allow them for momentum to go into the playoffs and beyond. Don't ever let anyone tell you that Week Nine is not important. A lot riding on the line tonight. 
Should be a great game. Stay with us. Pre-game was underwritten by Sarah Chrysler Dodge Jeep and Ram of Lake Orion, part of the Sarah Automotive family, offering new and used car sales, service on all makes, parts, accessories, and a state-of-the-art coll collision and repair facility. They're located at 3800 South Lapeer Road. Stop by or give them a call at 248 393 22 22. Just before kickoff, the Celine Hornets take on the Lake Orion Dragons tonight, week nine of the 2024 season as the Dragons take the field. This series goes back three years. Celine uh, won in, in 2021 and 2022. And last year, Lake Orion capped their 9-0 regular season by beating Celine 35-28 at Celine. Our officiating crew tonight, the referee is Andrew Hamer. Headlinesman is Ron Thompson. Line judge is Mike Cork Corcoran. Umpire is Rick Kraus. The back judge is Bob Conway. The side judge is Robert Ginther III. And Alex Shaheen is the field judge. Look across to the visiting stands. Good crowd accompanied their team from Celine. It's a long drive from Celine. It is. I at talk. this time of day on a Friday. Yeah. Yeah, I was talking with one of the uh, coaches over in the other booth. He says, I wasn't going to ride the bus. I drove myself. <laughs> Players line up. I'm sure for the seniors, this is bittersweet tonight. It's their, it's their last regular season game. You really don't know if it's the last home game or not because we don't know what selection Sunday holds. You don't know, and a lot of it, again, we said at the pregame, it depends on what happens here tonight, not yeah. only here tonight, but elsewhere around the state right. tonight in terms of the, the matchups, the playoff points, the geographic breakdowns and all that stuff. So um, it could be, and uh, but you got to play every game like it's your last opportunity. Yep. Clarkston plays Eisenhower tonight, I believe, yeah. Should be a good game there. Should be. Mm -hmm. And Adams goes to, I had that information somewhere. I, can't worry about, the teams can't yep. worry about what's happening now, so they got to worry about what's happened here in yep. the next uh, the next couple hours. Fortunately, you can't look at the scoreboard because the only thing that's on there is what's going on here tonight. At this time, we will pause as Director of Bands. Oops. I. Mike Steele is not leading the band. But we will pause for the national anthem.
four down for that game. Hardly caught his guys, 23% chance of rain. He made it Celine won the toss and deferred to the second half. Chris, you've got keys to the game tonight. Yeah, I think number one, simply ball control and no turnovers. It sounds uh, sounds basic, sounds fundamental, but it's important. Long, again, long, methodical, delib deliberate drives um, to keep Celine's offense off the field. I'm mean, easier said than done. But you know, as I said earlier, Celine's defense too has had three shutouts this year and given up again a total of ten points in the last four games. Three and outs offensively just won't cut it for Lake Orion. And then I think the think the second thing is obviously stop, slow down, contain junior quarterback Tommy Carey, 6'3", 185. Um, he played sparingly last year, but in those times, uh, in that time he had last year, 90, he completed 90% yeah. of his passes. He had 128 completions this year, 1,840 yards, 24 touchdowns. He was 12 of 11 for 186 yards last week against Skyline and five touchdowns. Uh, you got to stop, slow down, and contain him, and you got to look at their tight end, Lincoln Keys, and, and running back James Rush. Those are going to be key, uh, key players to, to contain for the Dragons. Ball's teed up. Little pop-up kick. Taken by Brody Thompson. He's going to be dropped about the 22-yard line. Little pop-up kick. So the Dragons take over first and 10 from there. Let's call it the 22. T.R. Hill leads him out. T.R. is simply going to have to shine tonight for the Dragons to be to come out on top tonight. He's got to do what he's done all season long. Jamari Cooper split to the left. He goes in motion. He gets the handoff coming around the right side. Gets up near the 30. They'll mark him down on the 29. Give him a gain of six. It'll be second and four. Nothing fancy. Run the ball. As we talked in pregame, this, this defense has played very, very well this year. I mean, when, you, when you give up a total of 65 points, again, if you include the forfeit game, 65 points in eight games, that's doing something right defensively. Yeah. Kyle England split to the left. Motion, handoff inside, and Jackie Vasquez is stopped for me. No, let's call it no gain. Yeah, no gain is right. Yep. I mean, Isaiah Harris, number one, came off the right edge and really clamped down and was able to get down, get in the backfield and make the play on Vasquez. Yeah, we don't have heights of these Celine players, but there's some rangy guys back there on, on that defense. They're rangy and they're big. I, I, we were on pregame or on the field during pregame, and there's some, some, some big guys. Yes, there are. Yeah. So third down and three. Twins left. Now Vasquez in motion right. Tr up the middle. He's got a first down and more over to 35 to the 37. It'll be first and ten. Lake Orion. Tr Hill. Tristan Hill. Last week alone, eight carries, 47 yards. And that's a key third down conversion that they need. Again, keep, I know it's early yet, but keep the clock running. Keep the Lake Orient offense on the football field. First and 10. Twins left, single wide right. TR drops the ball and does the wise thing and just falls on it. Back on the 29-yard line. Lake Orion's only turned the ball over seven times all year, and they turned it over twice last week in alone. So they've done a really good job of, of, of keeping the ball uh, with them this year. A little fumble like that. Luckily, like you said, TR was able to fall on it. But uh, those are things that in any game, especially a game like tonight, you can't have. Cooper splits to the right, England left with Vasquez in a slot left. Single back in the backfield. TR rolling left, looking. He's going to run it, tucks it and run. Up over the 35 to the 37. 
got back to the original line to gain. It'll be third down and 10. Yeah, TR did a nice job. Isaiah Harris, again, the right defensive end, came in nice and sharp, and TR was able to get out and around to keep the ball and run. Get, like you said, get back to the original line of scrimmage. It's a big third down play early on in this game. Number 10, A.J. Catenary, split to the left, trips to the right. On third down, TR back to pass. It's up in the cop. Breaks a couple tackles, stumbles forward to the 40. He had a lot of pressure and broke a couple tackles to get out of there. And it's going to be fourth and seven. Will Hoffman comes in to punt it away. Number eight, Austin Abbott is back along with number four, James Rush, to receive the punt. Line drive kick, hits on the 25, picked up at the 20, and brought down at the 25 by Nick France. Celine will take over first and 10 at their own 26 yard line, 747 to go here in the first, no score. You've heard all the things about Tommy Carr took over for his brother and he's a big rangy quarterback and he has just had an outstanding year this year. He's got trips to the right, single wide left. Now motion, far side, handoff, up the middle, breaks a tackle, is number four, James Rush. Brought down by Grady Harbin. James Rush, 694 yards rushing coming into today's game. Seven touchdowns on the year. I mean, you talked about Tommy Carr, and yeah, he didn't play a lot last year as a sophomore, again, wow. playing behind his, his brother CJ, but what he did was able to sit behind and learn how he saw the game. And that's really important in the develop of a, of a quarterback. Toss off to the left, intended for Rush, and he just dropped it. Well, I think he was looking upfield. He saw a lot of green grass in front of him didn't for, and forgot about the fact that you gotta catch the ball first before you can turn it upfield. So third down and one, Austin Abbott splits wide to the right, rushes in the backfield alongside Carr. Trip formation to the left. Tommy had one incompletion the entire game last week. He's got his first throw tonight was an incompletion. From the gun. Hand off to Rush. He's down. Brandon Nepchuk caught him in the backfield. That's a big time play on third down. Sure third was. down and short. First play, Rush gets nine, incompletion. The tackle for a loss by Nepchuk. So Vasquez is back Deep. He sets up off us about the 35 yard line. Short kick. Takes a bounce around the 40 to the 39. And that's where the Dragons will take over first and 10. The first quarter is underwritten by Jets Pizza. Jets Pizza with two convenient locations in the Orient area. Proud supporters of ONTV since 2009. For more information or to order dinner, visit JetsPizza.com. TR leads them out. First and 10 from the 39. Vasquez split left, twins to the right. Now Vasquez in motion. TR up the middle. Got a good gain on first down, still going over the 45 to almost the 47. It'll be second down. 
TR came into the game tonight, 558 yards rushing, eight touchdowns, averaging over seven yards a carry. He met and actually surpassed his average right there on that play. He has been the guts and glue of the Dragon offense this year. Jamari Cooper splits left, twins to the right. Handoff up the middle. Jaden Barrero has a first down into Celine territory at the 48. Nice carry by Barrero who had a huge game last week against yeah. Farmington. 15 carries, 124 yards, and two touchdowns. That's a big time first down to get the ball into Celine territory for the first time. Double wide, double slot. England and Vasquez set up on the right. Hand off this side, Barrero up the middle, jammed up, gets about three down to the 45. It'll bring up second and seven as we approach the five minute mark here in the first quarter. Glad you're with us on kind of a cool Friday night. We were just talking, it wasn't that long ago, we were here in short sleeves and complaining how hot the press box was. Double wide, double slot on second down. High snap, taken by Vasquez. He's around the left side and forced out of bounds about the 42. It'll be third down and four. There were some calls, someone, Vasquez got grabbed high up around the shoulder pad. Yeah, the, those calls came from the stands in front of us. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> Ryan Rochelot checks in at a wide receiver spot. Actually, he's going to set up as a tight end on the right. Twins right, right, single wide left. TR up the middle. Close to, they're going to mark him about a yard short of the first. It'll be fourth and one for the Dragons. This is where strategy comes into play early on. A fourth down and one at the 39 of Celine. Um, do you go for it? Do you punt? Do you play the field position game? They brought the jumbo package in. Place like this. Whichever way it goes could be confidence builders for either team. Three wide in the backfield, handoff. First down, Dragons. Ryan Rochelo on the carry. Oh. Barrero on the carry. Got the first down, down to the 34 yard look line. Look at the leg drive, look at the, yeah. the, the, the ball security, look at the lean. He knew he yeah. had to lean forward and he fell forward and got five on the play. But you know what? where it started? Started with the guys up front. Yep, absolutely. That offensive line has just been a rock this year. Trey Pacmara is in the backfield alongside Hill. Pass dropped, intended for England, and just went right through his hands. Same type of thing. It was a little quick screen. There was pressure coming up the middle, and England tur turned his head to look upfield. Had didn't have it secured as yep. of yet. So it'll be second and 10. This is exactly the, 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 the scheme, the, the, the way that Lake Orion wanted to run this game yep. to this point. It's they're in their control, methodical, yep. it's deliberate. They're keeping the offense on the field. Hill, England. Down to about, the, they're going to call it the 31. It's going to be third down and seven from the 31. Now we start to get in a little in third and long. Lake Orion coming in tonight averaging 53.3 in terms of third down conversions. This is the longest attempt, third and seven, they've had tonight. 
on third down. Cooper and Vasquez split right. England split to the left. TR got pressure, gets out of it. He's over to 30, close to, did he get it? Yes, he did. First down, Dragons. Boy, they're awfully close. If you, you are correct. What a gutsy call. You know, and that's a great thing that TR did. He felt the pressure, he saw the pressure, but he never kept, he never put his head down. He, he put his head down to find his team, his, his way through that, that little gap that he needed. It's all he needed was a small gap, and he knew where the sticks were, and he was able to get it. On first down, twins left, single wide right. From the gun, TR up the middle. Tries to cut it outside, goes down after a gain of seven. It'll be second and three. But you see how the end went with the toss, the, the yeah. fake, the fake to the, to the back, and TR keeps it and cuts it up for, for seven. Well designed. So second and three, ball is spotted on the 17 yard line as we're inside a minute here in the first. Dragons moving, trips to the left. Tight end lined up on the right. Up Look. the middle, Barrero. First down inside the five and got spun down. He hit that line with a head of steam. You think? <laughs> he, he wasn't touched and he, until he got about 10 yards downfield, was he? Find out right here. Wham, right through there. Yeah, and then about the five yard line. The helicopter. Yeah. So first and goal from the five. Vasquez splits to the right. And Vasquez took the handoff on the sweep and got dropped back on the 10. That's the end of the first quarter. The first quarter was also underwritten by Orion Oaks Dental, where the number one priority is to deliver quality care to their patients in a comfortable and convenient setting. Located at 400 West Clarkston Road in Lake Orion. Visit their website at www orionoaksdental.com or give them a call at 248-693-4422. The scoreboard for the first half of this game is underwritten by Michigan United Credit Union. The full service financial institution serves everyone who resides, works, worships, or attends school in Michigan. Give them a call at 248-814-4000 or visit their website at michiganunitedcu.org for more information. And replays for this game are sponsored by Jets Pizza with two convenient locations in the Orion area. Proud supporters of ONTV since 2009. For more information, visit jetspizza.com. So the Dragons moved the ball well in the first quarter Celine had it for three plays. Uh, I know. It's 0-0, it's zero, zero, but Lake Orion is flat out dominated. Yeah. Three plays for Celine, 18 for Lake Orion. This is exactly the way you want to scheme this game. Yeah. Now Lake Orion simply got to convert, put points on the board. Twins split left. Jamari Cooper split to the right. Cooper comes in motion. TR rolling right, throws, end zone, touchdown Lake Orion Dragons. Yes, Ryan Rochelo went up and got it. That's what being a six foot two, six foot three guy will get you. Rochelo's seventh catch of the year, his third touchdown of the season. Puts the Dragons up six nothing. What'd you always tell your wide receivers? Go up and get it, catch it at its highest point. Will Hoffman on for the extra point. Vasquez holding.
Ball's down, kick is up, and the kick is good. 11.51 to go in the second quarter. The Dragons take a seven to nothing lead. 13 play drive, 61 yards. Time of possession, 634. Both guys were open. The spacing's not very good with Vasquez and Rochelleau, but nonetheless, it was thrown to the right guy. Had the big guy go <laughs> One there. of the green guys, right? Yeah. That's all that matters. Here we got it again from ground level. Joe Johnson, great shot. You, you wonder if you're Selena, how do, how do you get two, let two guys get behind you in the secondary when you're inside the 10-yard line? Yeah, which one do you cover? <laughs> so Will Hoffman has it teed up. Line drive kick into and out of the end zone. That'll be a touchback and come out to the 20 where Celine will take over first and 10. Hey, thanks to Orion Neighborhood Television and Dragon Broadcasting, you can watch Lake Orion High School sports live online all year. We've got a full schedule of varsity football, volleyball, and more this fall, plus concerts and ceremonies. It costs less than $12 to, per month to watch sporting events, and half of that money goes back to the LOHS program. Be sure to designate Lake Orion High School when you set up your account, and I'll finish after this play. First and 10, single wide left, single wide right, Car complete out on the left side to number uh, nine. To, number eight, Austin Abadi. Yeah, Austin Abadi on the reception. Celine going hurry up. They got twins, trips left, single wide right. Car in the gun. Drops back, got pressure, throws, caught, complete, and a first down to number nine, Cruz Hansen. He had to have felt that pressure. I know he felt it once sure. he got hit, but he stood there nice and poised and composed and threw a nice strike on the far sideline. So first and 10 for Celine. Twins each side. Tight end set up on a wing left. Carr throws, dropped. Same. Intended for a body, and, and again, he just dropped it. Same thing, though. They're, they're looking to try to get upfield. It's the third time, twice for, for Celine, once for the Dragons. They're trying to get upfield without that ball's being caught. I mean, I mean, we say it all the time, used to say it all the time when we were here. Catch the ball, tuck the ball, yeah. then look to turn upfield. And they're forgetting about catching the ball and tucking the ball. Wide outs each side, same, same offensive formation for Celine. Handoff coming around the far side. Yep. And a flag down, ball was carried by James Rush, number four. We got a flag in the area of holding. Yeah, I was watching Nepchuk as he was trying to get outside and he got spun around and I think that's what they, what they got. Red and Nepchuk, number 73, got Held, was held. We'll listen to referee Andrew Hainer. <laughs> Penalty on number 84, Cole Cruiser. So that'll back him up to the 27 yard line and it'll be second down and they're calling it 28 for that. From the gun, Carr back, looks, throws, got a receiver brought down immediately. Great tackle by A.J. Leitz. Really nice open field tackle. Came in and just cut the legs out from under him. Huge third, third down. Huge third and long for the Dragons. Trips left, single wide right. Defense! 
Same thing we saw before. They look to the sideline for any adjustments. Carr back, got pressure. Down he goes on the 25 yard line. Alex Hensley and others. Peyton McIntyre in there yep, on the play Peyton too. McIntyre. Wham! Meet you at the quarter. Absolutely, and they did. They had him from the front side, the back yeah. side, and right on the front shoulder. Beautiful job. Beautiful plan of attack for that pass rush there. Well done on third and long. Great job by that Dragon defense. Jackson Vasquez sets up at the 42. Number and Lincoln Keys are they're gonna tight call timeout. Yeah, Lincoln Keys are tight end was not on the punt coverage team and they they called them back on and they called the timeout as yeah. a result. The second quarter of this game is underwritten by the Orion Area Chamber of Commerce. For nearly 75 years, the Orion Area Chamber of Commerce has been dedicated to creating a healthy local economy and building a strong environment for an economic growth and stability. They represent business to the government, coordinate educational forums, host networking events, advocate for business-friendly legislation, and promote community. And I'll finish it in a minute. High, short kick, fair catch called for and Vasquez, and there's a flag down. I think they're going to call fair catch interference on Celine. He was awfully close. You're right, yes, Doug. Yes, he was. And Jackie Vasquez did a great job of turning around, locating, and falling on that ball. So we'll check out the flag. Got to be a halo around him to allow him to make that catch. Yeah. Well, they've got five of the seven out there talking it over. Yes, sir. So fair catch interference, they got to give him, I think it's a yard or two yards to catch the ball. And that's a 15 yard penalty from the fair catch spot. So the Dragons will get the ball first and 10 from the Saline 38 yard line. Starting a drive in Saline territory. This is definitely something yes. you have to take advantage of. Double wide, double slot on first down. TR going around the right side, get, gets in the, that's Trey. He's down to the 10. We got a couple pen, uh, flags at the 15. They're gonna mark him down at the seven. And yeah, there are a lot of flags down there. That's wide receivers doing their job, blocking yes, on the sir. perimeter. Yep, it'll be a spot foul from the 25 yard line. They must have called it at the The play 15. action fake. Froze, froze Isaiah Harris there for just a split second that allowed TR yeah. to get to the edge. And there you see the hold right there. He's pulling the jersey. Nonetheless, great job, great play. Down to the 25-yard line. Snap was bobbled by TR. It was a high snap. I think it, it kind of went to his right and went up in the air and he fell on it and it'll be a loss of three. That's twice tonight that's happened. Yes, sir. Luckily for the Dragons, Tihar has fallen on the ball. So second down now and 13 
from the 28, 8.40 to go here in the second quarter. Dragons up by seven. Pakmara stays in as the running back. He gets the toss around the right side. Tries to cut it outside, and he stopped after a gain of four. It'll be third down and eight. Parrish on the stop for Celine. Travis Acker checks in at running back. Another big third down opportunity for the Dragons. They've converted to this point in time on third down. Trips to the right, single wide left on third down. TR back to pass, looks, throws, incomplete, threw into triple coverage trying to find Jamari Cooper, and it'll be fourth down, and out comes Will Hoffman. Dragons, not much wind. There was a little wind in pregame coming out of the north. Vasquez sets it up on the 30, so this will be a 40-yard attempt. The scoreboard says the ball's on the 28, it's on the 23. Yeah, from the left hash. Ball's down, kick is up, partially blocked. Yes, it was, Isaiah Harris. Yep. That ball's live. Ball's still live. Yeah, and the Dragons recovered it at the three. So now they're going to talk where the spot will be. Coach Bell's pointing that it's Lake Orion Ball. Yeah. Nope. But that's where Celine gets the football. It'll be first down Celine at the three. If you're going to miss something, miss a field goal, you couldn't have worked out any better. Sure, absolutely. That's just as good as a punt. <laughs> absolutely. Really smart for who I, I didn't quite see who, who who recovered fell on the football at the three yard line, but very very smart to be able to do just that. Yep. So Celine takes over first and ten from the three, seven twenty five to go in the half. Down to 15 seconds on the play clock. Yeah, they had a player running in real late to their sideline huddle. Still strapping his helmet up. Tight formation. Carr taking himself around the right side gets maybe a yard. That was not that was not Carr. That was a wildcat type formation. Was it? Actually, it's no, no gain. Nolan Klein. They're calling it second down and 10. I don't know. Car is it is now. Car in yeah, now? no, he, he is. He is. He okay. is now, yes. From the gun on second down. Back in the end zone, got pressure. Rolls right, looks, throws, caught. First down out to, I'm assuming the 26 yard line. Complete to Nolan Klein. He felt the pressure here, he steps up to his right. He keeps his eyes downfield and sees Klein coming across the middle, nice ball. Catch him in stride. Nice play by the Hornets, first down. Trips to the left, single wide right, now motion far side. Carr, complete, close to the first down is Cruz Hansen. 
It's going to be a first down. They're moving the chains. I tell you what, you're watching him from up here. He gets that ball out quick. Yes, he does. Quick. And he's got something on it, too, when it comes out of his hand. Trips left. Single back in the backfield on first down. Carr. Incomplete. Ooh. Intended for Lincoln Keys, the wide receiver, and he was met just as he was ready to catch the ball. And <laughs> from, here, from here, I was about to say it looked like a little bit early, but timing is everything. Yes, it is. No, so, no flags. It's a good thing. <laughs> second down and ten. Again, trips right, single wide left. Now motion. Carr looks, throws right into the hands of Lincoln Keys. And again, he took his eye off the I, ball. It's amazing. It's like, it's not that cold out. It just I, th I think in all four situations we've seen, two on each side of the football, or three, on, excuse me, on on Celine and the one time for Lake Gordon, they're anticipating getting yeah. hit. And they got gloves on. <laughs> Cold isn't an excuse. So third down and 10. Bunch formation to the left. Carr back. Throws. Got a receiver downfield. Beautiful pass. And nice catch by Austin Abbott. Yeah, they had the, the focus on the trips, uh, the, the bunch set on the left-hand side. He just went to the single receiver side and hit number nine, Cruz Hansen, over the middle on the post. So first and ten for Celine. Ball is marked on the 34. Single wideouts each side. Car complete to Abbott, maybe a yard, or I'm sorry, gain of gain of five. It'll be second down. It's a nice open field again, tackled by Pacmara. I mean, he gets by Pacmara there. He's he's gone down yeah. the sideline. Single wide each side, tight end set up on the right. Motion far side. Car rolling right, got pressured. His knee was down. His, yes, well, his, yes, his knee was down. Yeah. They're calling him. He was down <laughs> back at his own 40. Boy, did Lane Garris shoot that gap. This is pretty they're, play. They're calling this an incomplete pass. No way. Watch his knee go down right there. It's down. His knee is down. Too bad they can't oh review. Oh, my goodness. His knee was clearly down. Defense coordinator Russ Purdy is having a stroke down on the field. We he just saw is, it on the replay. Yeah. <laughs> we can't go, to the, can't go to the booth in high school football. Wow. So third down and five for Celine. Four wide receivers left. Carr drops the ball, and down he goes at the 32. Is that Will Hoffman with the, with the sack? Yes, it yes, is. Yes, it is. Fourth and nine. He was down there, right? Yeah. I just want to make sure. Yeah. Because yeah, he, he was, was down the play before, yeah. too. Yeah, he was down. <laughs> just making sure. It is fourth and scoreboard says eight, but it's nine. And Celine's going for it. Trips left, single wide right. On fourth down. Pressure. Throws. Incomplete. Ball short. Dragons take over on downs. What a defensive stand by that Dragon defense. They did it again. Yeah, it, it was the Dragon pressure up front. 
Didn't allow Carr to step into that throw. That's what allowed it to be, end up short. Great job by the Dragons. So the Dragons take over 217 to go in the half. You usually don't see a ball thrown short by CJ right. Carr like that. It's all because of that upfront pressure. You can't step under your throw, you can't get anything on it. That's exactly what happens. TR leads him out. Acker in the backfield as a fullback. Double wide, double slot, toss back. Jamari Cooper trying to turn it upfield and he's swallowed up after a gain of four. It'll be second and six from the 30, 37. As the clock continues to run, we're inside two minutes. Dragons break the huddle, trips left. Rochelot lined up as a tight end on the right. Up the middle, first down. Don Diego Hawkins on the carry. And these, these Dragon running backs tonight, Chris, they're hitting the line quickly. They're hitting the line quickly. Why? Because the guys up front are making holes. Mm -hmm. On first down, TR. Turns it up field. I think that was a busted play. It was. I think he was yeah. supposed to give, and luckily he was able to keep it on his hip and make something of it. Gain of four. And that's, It'll be second and six. That's the athlete Tristan is. I mean. And Lake Orion's going to take a timeout. As we have the clock reset to one minute, 18 seconds. Are you interested in studio production, maybe field production, or how about non-linear editing? If that's you, then you should check out ONTV's classes. We offer three different five-week classes to choose from. Studio class teaches you how to put together a full TV studio production. Field class shows you how to use our checkout equipment to conduct interviews, make films, or just practice videography. And finally, our editing class teaches you how to edit your videos using Adobe Premiere Pro or DaVinci Resolve. Classes are $55 per person and meet Mondays from 7 to 9 p.m. You can sign up on our website on orientontv.org or for more information, call 248-393-1060. TR, back the Pass, got pressure, gets out of it. Complete to Vasquez inside the 35 to the 34. And what a job by T.R. Hill to escape the pressure. Not only to escape the pressure, but then to throw the ball up and over Barbarino's head. 14. He's a big, he's a big defensive back for them, or line, excuse me, linebacker for them. He just threw a nice touch pass up and over for the nice first down. First and ten. Twins left, single wide right. Handoff, up the middle, Dom Diego. No, I think that was Trey Pacmara, number seven. Yeah, that was Pacmara. Barbarino on the stop, and Barbarino's been all over the field tonight. So second down, we're inside a minute. Twins left, single wide right. TR back, looks, throws, tries to set up a screen to Pacmara, and it went nowhere. Yeah, Alan Sadoff right there read that perfectly. And Lake Orion's going to take their second timeout as they reset the game clock to 38 seconds. Was this what you expected in week nine? You know what? I expected, <laughs> we expected a dogfight tonight simply because of what Celine has done this year and the way this Dragon team has just come 
They've taken, as to use the boxing analogy, they've taken body blow after body blow and come back every time. I, I'm going to be honest with you. I did not expect this. I did not, because of what you said earlier, Celine has averaged 50 points yeah. since their suspicion, or since their, since their forfeited games. Yeah. They averaged 46.9 on the year. They have zero right now. TR back to pass, got time. Now go, he's going to go down about the 43. And that was simply what we call a coverage sack. Yeah. TR held that ball too long, and, and as a result, we're under 20 seconds. Sadoff was there they to make it. They may just let the clock run out and go to halftime. And that's exactly what they're going to do. We've played a half. Oh, nope. He's... Oh, did they stop the clock? Yes, they did. It, they did. Three point two seconds, and Orion's going to take a timeout. Okay, Coach, why did they call a timeout with three point two left? Uh, I'm not coaching right now. I'm up in the booth, so that's what uh, that's what they're paid the big bucks for. I'm uh, in the the broadcast booth. Um, that's a question you'll have to ask. I don't know. I don't know. So 3.2 seconds left. The ball is spotted on the Celine 43 yard line. It is fourth and 19. And simple Hail Mary is what it looks like, right? Dragons come out in a double wide, double slot look. And you're right, I if, think it's- If it's they would have done it any earlier, yeah. you, incompletion, Just, Celine's got the chance to at least keep the ball with their two timeouts. Just back and throw it. TR looks, throws, and Jamari Cooper dropped it. That may have been an intentional drop. We've played a half. The Lake Orion Dragons lead the Celine Hornets seven to nothing. You're watching exclusive coverage of Lake Orion Dragon football on Orion Neighborhood Television and the NFHS streaming service. Halftime is sponsored by Sarah Chrysler Dodge Jeep and Ram of Lake Orion, part of the Sarah Automotive family, offering new and used car sales, service on all makes, parts, accessories, and a state-of-the-art collision and repair facility. Palaces are, Sarah is located at 3800 South Lapeer Road, or give them a call at 248-393-2222. And Orion Oaks Dental, where the number one priority is to deliver quality care to their patients in a comfortable and convenient setting. Located at 400 West Clarkston Road in Lake Orion. Visit their website at www.orionoaksdental.com or give them a call at 248-693-4422. We'll be right back. I am confident. I am passionate. I am strong. I, I, I am, am an athlete. athlete. Girls play today because of those who came first. The leaders, coaches, officials, trailblazers made possible by the passing of Title IX more than 50 years ago. No person shall be excluded from participating on the basis of sex. Title IX confirmed what we already knew. Girls can play, and they benefit greatly from being involved in high school sports. Continue to play, to coach, to officiate. Continue giving back, because 50 years is just the beginning. You were once inspired by those who came first. Now, be the inspiration for those who come next. Finishing up halftime, the Lake Orion Dragons lead the Celine Hornets seven to nothing. And Chris, we were talking after the half ended. We didn't expect this. Uh, 
I, I certainly didn't. I just, I, again, I talk, we talked about, you know, all the points that Celine puts up on the board, uh, all the points they don't give up defensively. They come into tonight's game only giving up 8.1 points a game. They've already given up seven. Yeah. They come into the game averaging 46.9 points a game. They've got zero. Yes. I mean, I, I just, I, I didn't expect this. And uh, Lake Orion has played, played that first half, in my opinion, just as good as they could have played it. Yeah. Um, they, they did exactly what they needed to do. We talked about it in the keys to the game. That deliberate, that ball controlled offense to keep that Celine, Celine offense uh, you know, off the field. And uh, when it's all said and done, you know, Celine's got minus four yards rushing. Wow. Seven, of, seven of 12, seven of 12 for 80 yards in the air. And so, um, with no, obviously no points on the board. So the Lake Orion defense has been outstanding. And uh, nonetheless, it's uh, seven nothing. Well, this is where we find out what kind of halftime pep talk the coaches give their teams. If your coach, yeah, if you're Celine, you know you were given fire and brimstone, get the ball, score, get the ball back, score again, get the ball. No. And if you're Coach Bell, it's just keep doing what you're doing. Keep doing what you're doing. Don't turn the ball over. No one turned the ball over in that first half, which is great. A couple bobbled snaps that we yep. saw. Um, you got to make sure that those are, are taken care of. And, and they did that first half, but you can't, those can't result into, you can't end up making those types of plays uh, go against you. Lake Orion, 146, 100, excuse me, 136 yards in that first half. T.R. Hills, three of six for 24 yards, but really that's not the, the most important thing. He had 51 yards rushing yep. uh, on the ground, and he, he did a nice job of, of, again, very methodical, very deliberate drives that, again, allowed Lake Orion to do what they did and lead by seven in the first half. And as we approach the second half, the second half scoreboard is underwritten by Cutter Rug Flooring, a local family-owned and operated small business proudly serving Lake Orion and surrounding communities. Fully licensed and insured, they specialize in carpet restretching, flooring repairs, as well as full-service installation and sales. Their mobile showroom brings the shopping experience right to your door. For your convenience, give them a call at 586 Two three or five three one three two eight zero, or visit them at Cutterrug Flooring Installation. dot com. I tell you what, there'll be a lot of individuals cutting a rug tonight oh if Lake Orion comes out on top. Oh boy! Celine will receive the second half kickoff. Will Hoffman puts a foot into it, high end over end kick, into and out of the end zone. Almost over the crossbar. So that will come back to the 20 where Celine will take over first and 10. And Tommy Carr, we saw him at times just lead the offense, throw a beautiful ball. But Chris, he hasn't had the time. He's been, he's been rushed all night long. Yeah, sacked a couple times. Uh, for lost in total of seven or eleven yards, excuse me, and uh, they've only rushed the thrown the or run the ball four times. So Carr leads him out, wide out either side on first down, single back in the backfield, alongside Carr and the gun. Handoff up the middle, taken by James Rush. He gets. Five, it'll be second and five from the 25. An appropriate name for a running back, don't yes, you think? It Rush. Is. Absolutely. One thing he hasn't done so far tonight very well as a team, he himself hasn't either. That's a tribute to Lake Orion defense, how well they're playing. Yeah. Carr back to throw, got pressure. <clears throat> Complete. Over the 40 to the 45 was number 84, Cole Cruiser. He just got a spot in the zone, sat there and waited for the ball to come to him and turned it upfield. It's a first down. They're going to mark it on the 44. 
It'll be first and 10 for Celine. Yeah, Cruiser just ran that little in cut, that little dig route, if you will, square in, if you will, and found the hole between the, the zone, and Carr threw a Cruiser a nice ball for a first down. Trips to the left, single wide right on first down. Handoff. Up the middle goes Rush, and he gets about eight. Harbin on the tackle for Lake Orion. Because Celine has led by big margins in so many games this year, again, we said earlier, 694 yards rushing. You know, Rush hasn't played full games, and so that's one thing that he's going to have to play, and they're going to have to continue to run the ball yep. and continue to go to Rush. Just can't let him break out if you're the Dragons. Rush up the middle, got a first down. Down to the Lake Orion 40 where he stood up and pushed back. Did they call his forward progress? <laughs> Peyton. Peyton McIntyre came out of the scrum with the ball. I, I like to see that because I don't, was he ever down by contact? I, I never saw his knee go down. They just did forward progress. But the explanation said down yeah. by contact. You would think you're right, the forward progress yeah. stopped, he would have mentioned. So first and 10, Carr from the gun, looks, throws, complete, and dropped after a seven yard gain was Austin Abbott. Austin Kahn on the stop, it'll be second down. Second and three from the 33. And that's one thing Celine's not doing. You can tell they're not, they're not panicking. They're only down yep. seven. They, yeah, they yep. didn't have a great first half, but uh, I, I was going to say that, that, not that they've been in these types of games this year, but um, the program as a whole has been in these types of game over the years. Yeah, yes, a, a first year head coach in Kyle Short, but. Thrown and incomplete. Trey Pakmara did a great job of breaking that pass up. Yeah, got his it. hand in there and did not interfere. Technique was perfect. He stayed on the back hip of the wide receiver and was able to knock that ball down with his inside hand, which was his right hand at the time. Great play. Brings up a big third down. So third and three from the 33. Wide out each side, Carr, back, looks, throws, just a little dump pass over the middle to Cole Cruiser, and he cruised down to the 11, where it'll be first and 10. A little tight end screen, he stays in a the block, then boom, he releases downfield. Use the, use the umpire as a screen it's part of the game. It is. Part of the field, yep. Smart so, if you can use it. Yep, first and 10 from the 11. Handoff up the middle, rush down to the six. Gain of five, it'll be second and five. Malachi Hood in on the tackle. On senior night, the senior makes a stop. So second down and six. Tight end set up on a wing left. Rush up the middle, inside the five to the three. And it'll be third down and two. Again, Rush only had two carries that first half for seven yards, but uh, he had 64, 64 yards last week. Carried the ball 10 times, two touchdowns against Skyline, but uh, they seem to be content with yeah. giving the ball and finding, establishing that run game. They can get a first down without scoring.
Carr getting the play from the sideline. Twins left, single wide right on third down. Carr up the middle. I don't think he got the first down. He did not, no he did not. So it's gonna be fourth down. No gain, it's fourth and two from the three. On fourth down, here we go. I would look for a player like Lincoln Keys who's lined up at, left, at the tight end spot on the left side of the field. Rush, he didn't get it. Wow. What a stand by that Dragon defense. Wow. Jacob Escobedo in there on the play. Not going anywhere. Watch this play, look at the penetration. Escobedo just blew up number 71, Ian Thiessen. Was able to get in there on the play. Wow. Actually, that was Isaiah Harris on the carry. What a defensive stand by the Dragons. They got the t-shirt cannon here and they're blowing t-shirts all over the place here. So the Dragons take over first and 10 from the five. TR up the middle, up near the nine. Gain of three. I'm really surprised they they have not used Lincoln Keys, their tight end off offensive, Celine's off, uh, Celine's tight end. I'm surprised they haven't used him as much as I thought they would coming into tonight's yeah. game because he's, a, he's an SEC commit. He, he, he's got some offers from SEC programs. And so I just, you gotta, you gotta get to a situation where you, where you use, utilizing the talent yeah. you've got. Second and seven, up the middle. Goes Ferrero out to the 11. The line judge has him on the 11. It's a first down regardless. First down Dragons at the 15. Now you got a little breathing room. Yeah, compared to where you started the drive, you're right. <laughs> you're, you're still on your own 15 yard line. Still got 85 yards to go. Closing in on the five minute mark of the third quarter. Handoff up the middle is Barrero. And he's got a gain of five on first down. It'll be second and five. When you can get Five, five and yards. six yards yes. on a, on a, on first down, you're setting yourself up to be able to do a lot of things offensively while allowing the clock to continue yes. to run. And in a game like this, and you're up seven, your defense is playing as well as it, and you're keeping that Celine offense off the field, you want that yeah. clock to keep running. And the Dragons are gonna use every bit of that 40 second clock. TR trying to run, nothing there. Down he goes. It'll be third down and eight. Ball's marked back at the 17. So it'll be third and eight. But what you can't have after a five and six yard gain on first down, you can't have a... Yeah, you can't have negative plays. No. But this is what the ebb and flow of the game yep. of football is all about. So on third down, Dragons come out, trips left. Down to seven on the play clock. TR back to throw. Looks, and he's going down. Tell you what, Isaiah Harris is a good football player. Yeah. We've said his name a number of times, and he came up with that sack, that sack on Hill that time. So the Dragons, after 
a heroic goal line stand. We'll have to punt it away. Abbott is set up on the Lake Orion 45. Will Hoffman from his end zone. Nice punt. Taken and dropped. It's a live ball. Dragons got it. Well, Austin Abbott went oh. to chase it to his right, bobbled it. Austin Kahn, who was the gunner, Recovered for the Dragons. What a huge turn of events. Tell you what, you think about the cup. Here's, that's a great job. That's great yeah, hustle is. play. And think about the plays that Lake Orion has made on special teams. Yes. One after the blocked uh, blocked kick that Celine had. Able to, Lake Orion was able to down it at their own three-yard line. And now getting the ball on this side of the 49 of Celine after the muffed punt. Guerrero up the middle for about three. Into the center of the line and Barbarino in on another tackle for the Hornets. It'll be second and seven. Boy, special teams are such a critical oh, part boy. of the game of football. Let's see if Lake Orion can capitalize on that miscue. Double by the wide, Hornets. double slot. Vasquez up the middle. First down near the 35. I. They'll mark them down at the 33. When they start run, running that play to the short side of the field here, I thought there's no way Vasquez is getting around the edge. And he took off, he turned, as soon as he put that left foot in the ground, he took off, got up the sideline, down to the 36 yard line of the Hornets. So first and 10, double wide, double slot, ball on the left hash. Dragons on the move. Dom Diego Hawkins up the middle for a couple. And a three Hornets there. Yeah. to make that play. But again, what's, what's happening? That it, clock is moving. That clock is moving. And yeah, two yard gain on first down that yep. time, but, but the clock is moving and that's to the advantage obviously of the Dragons. Under two minutes to go here in the third quarter. And I, I don't like to be talking about the clock in the third quarter, but oh. in a game like this, it's yeah, critical. It is. It's part of the game management that Coach Bell's doing a nice job of. Trey Pachmara. First down, and he absolutely steamrolled Nolan Klein. Now that was Pacmar's way of just saying, welcome to Lake Orion. Yeah. This is what we're gonna bring tonight. We talked about some of the schools that Celine has played, and they have not played what are referred to as powerhouse teams this year. And, and the two games they did, you know, Brighton and Dexter, they played in weeks one and week two. So it's been a while since they played a really, really good team. Ooh. Oh, that's going to be a call. Both, both slot receivers went in motion. So we and, will back it up five and do it again. And it's a good thing that that was the case yeah. with dead ball because that ball ended up on the ground. The quarterback center exchange. Vasquez and... Cooper both shifted. And they declined the penalty, so they're going to take the loss. That was not a dead ball foul. You're right. My fault. Yeah. So it'll be second and 15 from the 29 as we're inside a minute. England and Vasquez split to the right. Pakmara cuts it upfield, nothing there. It'll be third down. Coleman Ross 
did a nice job of setting the edge and forcing Pacmara back into where the, the Hornets defenders were. It's third and 15 as we're at 15 seconds to go and uh, Dragons are not going to snap the ball. They're going to let the third quarter come to an end. A very entertaining third quarter. So we played three. It is the Lake Orion Dragons seven, the Saline Hornets zero. Be sure to tune in to replays of your favorite games right here on Orion Neighborhood Television. Tune in Tuesdays, Thursdays, Saturdays, and Sundays at 7 p.m. for the most current games in our lineup. Games are also replayed throughout the week, so check our program guide on our webpage at orionontv.org for replay times that best fit your viewing schedule. Also, you can visit our YouTube link for games on demand, www. Orion, ONTV.org. And this one is shaping up to be an instant classic. Instant classic with uh, not a lot of scoring. And again, I don't think we thought there would, yeah. wouldn't be, a, thought there would be a lot more scoring than this. Let's put it that yep. way. But I think that's why it makes it instant classic. That's why watching the game of football week in and week out, whether it's high school, college, or pro, you just never know what's going to happen. That's never why do. the entertainment value of the game of football is so great. So on third, we have trips left. Rochelo lined up as a tight end on the right. TR. Pakmara up the middle, keeps the feet churning, gets it down to the 25. And out comes Will Hoffman. Isaiah Harris, number one, blocked the kick the last time. They gotta be watching out for where he, he is aligned. He's right over to center. Nope, oh, he's moving over. Ball is down, kick is up. And the kick is no good, wide left. Had the distance and just hooked it over the left upright. Yes, it did. And he was rock solid perfect in pregame. So the ball comes back to the 20 where Celine takes over first and 10 with 11-13 to go in the game. The importance of uh, special teams. I've, I've preached that for, for 25 years. In some way, shape or form, those three points yep. are gonna have a factor in this game. So Celine comes out, twins right, single wide left on first down, motion far side. Carr rolling right, throws back to the left. Got an open receiver. Brought down on a fine leg tackle by Will Hoffman was Lincoln Keys and Chris You've been saying all night long, involve Lincoln Keys. Get, get the ball to your best players. They did a nice job of getting everybody to look to the Dragons' defensive left, and then Lincoln Keys is blocking on the edge, and then he releases and comes open, and he's got the size, he's got the speed to do exactly what you're doing right now. Great pre or great uh, pursuit by Will Hoffman to make an ankle-saving tackle, touchdown-saving tackle. He came from the center of the field to bring him down. First and 10 from the Lake Orion 37. Carr back, looks, throws, caught, keys again. Down to the 25. His catch radius, and his, how big he is. Look at the time, pressure's there, but perfect ball. Yep. Out away from the defender of the Dragons. Nice catch, use your hands, tuck it. 
First down. And you're right, he stands up amongst those defensive backs. He's literally head and shoulders above them. Carr, back, looks, throws. Got rush. And he is down near the 20. They're gonna call him down at the 20. Gain of five, it'll be second and five. Little change of pace to the running back coming out of the backfield. Start to feel a little momentum going on yep. the, to the Hornets side of the field. Trips right, single wide left on second down. Carr, back, looks, throws, deflected, intercepted by the Dragons. And with a play like that, that's how you shift momentum. Randy out. Harvin picked it off in the end zone, brought it out to the two. You know why? It's because Alex Hensley was the one who deflected it, knocked it up in the air yeah. for it to be intercepted. Here's the replay. Look at Hensley, number 35, right there at about the 10 yard line. Right Hit it up in the air, boom! Way to come off the ball. Dive, get extended, catch the ball for the interception. What a great way to change momentum. And not only catch it, but catch it while he's horizontal to the field and tuck it in before he hit the ground. Great play by Harbin. So first and 10 for the Dragons from the two. Up the middle, Dom Diego Hawkins for about five to the six. Give him four. It'll be second down and six. And all the time, the clock continues to run. Tommy Carr has averaged three touchdown passes per game this year. Yeah. Celine has not scored. Twins left, single wide right. Now motion, handoff, up the middle. Hawkins on the run. It's going to be third down and four. And this is a huge third down. Brody Thompson is coming in at quarterback. TR is on the sidelines. I agree. So third and four. Handoff, up the middle, spinning. First down, Dragons, it looks like. Yes, it is. Move the chains. We'll try to check on TR. Trey Pacmara checks in at running back. We've reached the halfway point of the fourth quarter. Twins right, single wide left, backs in an I formation alongside Thompson. Handoff up the middle for about three by Guerrero. By Ross. Ross on the tackle for Celine. It is second and seven. Second and eight, they gave him two. Quite the situation to put get Brody Thompson oh in the boy. game and, and think about what's going through his mind at this point in time. And TR is on the bench, on the sideline. We don't quite know what's up with him 
and Lake Orion is going to take a timeout. During this sports season, Orion Neighborhood Television will be covering a large variety of games. Our sports coverage will include varsity football, no more JV football after tonight, volleyball, boys soccer, and more. Select games will be streamed live on dragonbroadcasting.org and will be replayed on our channel Comcast 10 and AT&T 99. Visit orionontv.org for our program schedule, and we do not know yet if we will be with you next week or not. Should the Dragons have a home game next week, we will be here. That all will be decided on Sunday evening. On second down, Jamari Cooper's in the open field, cuts it inside, over the 40, out to the 42. Huge run by Jamari Cooper. I thought he was going to have the speed to be able to take it without stutter stepping and trying to cut back at the time, but what the, the important thing he did was what? Yes, they're going to set the clock or stop the clock when they set the chains, but that keeps the ball in bounds yes. and it keeps the clock moving. Yes. What a huge run, huge yeah. run. And I was looking while they were resetting the chains, the clock didn't stop. Backs in an offset eye on first down. And we're, miss, uh, we're gonna need to. Yep, Dragons are misaligned. I think they're one short, player one yep. short. Yep, and so they had to call timeout. Yep. And that could be huge. Absolutely, those, those timeouts in a game like this are critical. So many things are coming es into play. Especially after a big play like that. A big run to get out from your, the back of your end zone. You're down to one timeout left. Celine's got all three. Yeah. And it's first down from the Dragons 43. And we just talked about the fact that Cooper stayed in bounds yes. to keep the clock running, and you as a team had to stop the clock, use yep. a timeout, which are so valuable, and, and to, to get the play in. Gotta be, you gotta have those things cleaned up. Now, having said that, you know, Thompson's in there, Hill is not in there. Does that have any, anything to do with that? I don't know, but uh, when it's all said and done, um, you stop the clock, yeah. and uh, you're down to one timeout. So first and 10, double wide, double slot for the Dragons. Thompson under center, handoff, and Barrero goes nowhere. Oh, that was Pacmara, goes nowhere. So you think about this from the Selene side of things, you know T.R. Hill is out, and you can kind of play this game a little bit differently defensively because the, they yep. more than likely know, they've seen film on Thompson earlier in the season when, when Hill was out. Um, they know he's not the runner that Hill is, right? And so now they can focus a little bit differently defensively and do some different things yeah. up front with their blitzes or some of their stunts. So second and 12 from the 41. Thompson from the gun. Thompson up the middle. Got about seven. And here I go and say that. That's a heck of a run by Thompson. It's going to be third down and five from the Dragon 49. As we close in on 430 to play in the game. Double wide, double slot on third down. Find a way, Dragons, find a way. Single back in the backfield is Pacmara. Thompson from the gun. Ball's on the ground and out of bounds at the 41. Jamari Cooper never got the handle on it. 
And obviously, luckily, it bounced the way it did to go out of bounds, retain possession. Clock does stop, but at least it doesn't go over to the Hornets. Right. So it's fourth down from the 41. Will Hoffman will be kicking with whatever wind there is will be at his back. Those are some of the things that you can't simulate when you, you know, the, the, the second yeah. string quarterback's not getting the same reps as your first stringer, right? Snap is good. Nice kick. Fair catch called for at the 20 is taken by Austin Abbott. And the Celine Hornets have 80 yards to cover and four minutes and seven seconds to get there. As they say, enough said. <laughs> Well, so we should just be quiet the rest of the broadcast? Oh, no. No, no, this is this is too good to be quiet. <laughs> Dragon defense looking for one more stand. Hornets come out. Twins to the right. Single wide left. Handoff up the middle, goes nowhere. Rush was stoned at the line. Max Nearing came in and stopped him. So second and 10 as we approach 3.30. Trips to the right, single wide left. Car back, Guess looks, who they're going to. Going deep. Incomplete. Covered like a blanket by Trey Pakmara. That's a terrific ball that Carr threw to Keys, but Pac Morrow won the battle, obviously, because he put his hand right up and through Keys' hands to knock that ball out. I, I take that back. No, that was just a drop. Yep. That was just a drop. That's a perfect, perfectly and thrown ball, and that's the second drop Keys has had tonight. As he went to, he bobbled it, and as he went to go for it, then Pac Morrow stripped his right arm down. So, Third down and 10. Trips They're right. gonna look at that same matchup right down here again. He goes the opposite and way. He's open. Intended for Nolan Klein, number six. And he had separation on the Dragon defender. But again, because the pressure was there, defense, defensively, Carr could step up. Yep. Celine, force that ball to sail high. Celine is going to call a timeout. It will be fourth and 10 from their own 20 with 319 to go in the ball game. Wow. Hey, tell the dog he's going to have to wait. Well, you're calling me a dog? <laughs> no, no, but if your dog's got to go out, tell him to wait a while. This, this is interesting because... They called and used their first timeout, Celine did. Yeah. And that tells me that they're going to go for it. Yep. Whereas if they would have punted, well, we're, we're going to find out, I guess. If they would have punted, you pin Lake Orion back. You, 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 got, you know you got a, a, a junior quarterback that hasn't had a lot of reps this year. You rely on his offense. I, I don't know. There's a, there's a couple different ways to look at it. It's going to be very interesting. But if you are... They're staying on the field. If you're that Dragon defense, brief, be prepared for anything. This might be the ball game. Trips right, single if wide If the Dragons left. can get a stop. Six man front for the Dragons. Carr, under pressure, looks, throws. What wow, a what a catch. What a catch. <laughs> What a catch, what yes. a play on both sides. Wow. Car Lincoln to Keys. Keys. The ball was high and Keys tipped it up to himself. 
and covered the rest of the yardage for the touchdown. What a play. That's why you go to the guys that can make plays for you. And, and Keyes, as we said earlier, dropped a couple of balls tonight, but when crunch time yep. came to play, he's there making plays, yeah. and that's why you do it. You, you don't give up on a kid like that. And, and Carr, did, Carr did a nice job of avoiding pressure and keeping his eyes up and down field. And to they're going to go for two. Yes, and Lake Orion just called their third and final timeout. Wow. Talk about a change of events. Boy. A turn of events. Look at Carr. He's, he feels the pressure from his backside, turns his shoulders, keeps his eyes up and down field. You look like that ball's being thrown high, and Keyes, based on his frame, can go up and get a ball like that. Great block right there, yep. and then no one's going to catch Keyes. He's gone. Oh. And that's why he's going to the SEC. Unbelievable. Unbelievable play. On a car, unbelievable play by Keys. And again, what a what a throw! Look at by that! Carr. Look at the look at the catching look radius. At the height. <laughs> yeah. Going up for a basketball rebound right there, but doing it one-handed. That's big time play, big time play. You can't you can't yep. fault the Dragons for any of that. That's just a great play and Carr, by the Hornets. Car had the wherewithal not only to escape the pressure but to make a throw on the run. So here we go. Four wide receivers right. Under center. Keys. And he's in for the two points. It was just key step back. The other three receivers formed a wall and a guy that size yeah. you're not going to stop him that close no. to the goal line two-point conversion wow so the two-point conversion is good we have two minutes and 59 seconds to play it is eight to seven in favor of Celine. what were you saying earlier Instant classic. Instant classic. Wow. What, what a football game. What a football yeah. game. Vasquez and England drop back deep for the Dragons. Celine scores their first points with 259 to go in the fourth quarter. Now they now they've changed it to 304. Austin Costanica will kick off. I did not hear the official call up to change the time on the scoreboard. And just a short kick. England picks it up, trying to get upfield, and he's going to go down about the 10. They're going to call him down at the 9 with 2.58 to go. Yeah, not catching that ball really hurt there. Yeah. Because that allowed that Celine kick coverage team to get down there, and England's back was turned to everybody, couldn't get, there was no wall set up, nothing there, so that really hurts. You're going to see, I assume Brody's out there, Brody Thompson's out there, he is. Yeah, TR's out there with his helmet off. He's, he's giving help wherever he can. So here we go, 2.58 to go. Dragons have 90 yards to pay dirt. From the gun. Reverse. Turn the corner, turn the corner, Vasquez. Vasquez up near the 15. They're gonna call him out on the 14. He did get out of bounds. That's good. Yes. Got out of bounds. Stop the clock. 249. Lake Orion, no timeouts left. Celine's got two. And we have a second and five. Twins left. Jamari Cooper 
Splits right. Under center. Up the middle is Pakmara near the 20. It's going to be third and less than a yard. Clock is stopped. Why is the clock stopped? I don't know. I think they thought, yeah, okay, th now they're moving the chains. Yeah, okay, it's a first down. That's why the clock was stopped. They were, they were very slow in getting the chains moved. But there was no signal either, though. No. No one signaled anything, so. Now the clock now starts. Now he's starting it. As we wind down to 2.30 to go. Twins right, single wide left. From the gun. Thompson rolling, throwing over the head of Rochelo. Not only has this been a really good game tonight, it's been a clean game. There hasn't been a yes. lot of laundry, a lot, a lot of penalties yep. thrown tonight. They're, they're letting everybody play. And Matt. that's uh, what a week nine game that means a lot in Division One should be all about. I don't think we've had a flag in the second half. I don't think you're right. Yeah. Or I, I think you're I think you're I don't think you're right. I think you're right. Excuse me. You're not the only one that's told me that in my life. <laughs> so second and ten. Twins left, single wide right. Thompson back, looks, throws. Got it to Vasquez, but he just can't break that wall of white jerseys. Oh, that was England. So it's going to be third down and five. This, too, is where the ebb and flow of play calling yes. it, it, it differs now. You've got uh, Brody Thompson in there. It's just a different way to get the play out. Trips right on third down. Thompson back. Heading up the middle. Got a first down. Well done, Brody, over, well done. Over the 35 to the 36, a minute 44 to go. Dragons trying to get set. Thompson, it just spikes it to stop the clock with a minute 39. So I'm going to go back again. We've talked about it a couple times now, the importance of special teams. Yes. We talked about down here. That 40-yard field goal that was missed. You don't think that was an important right. part of this game? And I'm just looking. I'm thinking that if this was regular television and they had the red line, which is the, <laughs> it would be about the 30-yard line. That would give Will a 47-yard shot, and he has made those. Yes, he has. So... Motion this side, Thompson back, got pressure. Steps away from, wants to throw it. Jamari Cooper wow. caught it and got five yards out of it. What a great play by Thompson to have the wherewithal to be able to feel the pressure, step up, get hit, and still throw the ball and complete it. Third down and five. Thompson back, looks, throws, caught, and dropped intended for England and put it high and Kyle went up for it and just couldn't bring it down. Yeah, he went up high and Patrick Williams hit it, hit him simultaneously in the backside, forced that ball out. So here we go, fourth down and five, a minute 10 to go. Dragons come out, three wide receivers left. Rochelo, tight end on the right. Thompson, back. Looks, throws. Almost intercepted by Nolan Klein. And Celine is going to take over on downs. Wow. What a football game we've had tonight.
eight to seven. The Dragons are out of timeouts. All Celine has to do is take a knee. So Tommy Carr leads them out. They set up in a victory formation. They take a knee. And they can let this clock roll down inside right around 30 seconds and they won't have to snap it again. What I like about this schedule is that these teams have played for the last couple of years, and, and these are two powerhouse football yes, programs. They They're not afraid of, of, of playing good on good, if you will. And, and so, look at this. Even before, these two teams are just coming out and congratulating each other on one heck of a football game. As the clock winds down, the Lake Orion Dragons drop, indeed, a heartbreaker to the Celine Hornets in what we, we have termed and we still maintain is a, an instant classic. Our final score, the Celine Hornets eight, the Lake Orion Dragons seven. You're watching exclusive coverage of Lake Orion Dragon football here on Orion Neighborhood Television and the NFHS streaming service. We'll be right back. We are the MHSAA a collection of 750 high schools and 750 middle schools. From Temperance to Copper Harbor, from New Buffalo to Alpena, each year more than a quarter of a million students play one of our 28 sports. More than one and a half million fans attend our postseason games. There are 30,000 coaches and 8,000 officials, not to mention all of the volunteers. The MHSAA believes in the four S's, School sports should be safe and kept in the appropriate scope. We believe nothing beats great sportsmanship and that scholarship in the classroom is more important than excellence on the field or court. Most of all, we believe school sports should be fun. So come out and join us at a game. Support your school, support your community, and come see what the excitement is all about. Down on the field after an eight to seven win by the Celine Hornets with head coach Chris Bell. And Chris, we called it an instant classic. It was one heck of a football game. You know what, it was. And when you play Celine, we knew it was gonna be a good game, and you know, for probably fans, but for us it was ugly. I mean, our defense played great, but you know, we get a field goal blocked, we miss a field goal. We have so many possessions down deep, we don't capitalize on our ball handling was awful. I mean, we were moving the ball, and then we would fumble a snap, or we, it was, it was, it looked like week one stuff. I mean, week nine, this stuff shouldn't be happening. So I just, I don't know what it was, but our just, our attention to detail was not good. It cost us offensively, and we let them hang around. We had chances to put them away, and we let them hang around. So that, that's on us. I mean, it was, you know, they, they're a good team, they're well coached, they got good kids, but, uh, we had a chance to put this thing away and shame on us. We didn't. And, that, and that, you know, the lesson here is it's week nine. You do the stuff in the playoffs, you go home. There's a lesson, okay? The, the second season starts. You know, this was a good game to hey, play a high caliber team, get us ready for the playoffs. Physically, we did fine. I thought our, I thought our uh, defense played great, but we got to clean up special teams and we got to clean up the, the self imposed mistakes that we're having on offense that are putting us in long area situations. Brody Thompson came in towards the end of the game. T.R. Hill was out. Story out there on, on T.R.? T.R. just got, he got shaken up a little bit. And then with the playoffs coming, you know, we're like, 
Better be safe than sorry. Yep. Brody's a good quarterback. Uh, we didn't want to expose Tiara to any more hits or just he was, you know, he had taken a few already. And he's at, you know, he's he's fine, but it was one of those things that's like, you know, we we just want to be better safe yep. than sorry and save him for next week. Selection Sunday. Yep. It's it happens every year. Yeah, you know, it's uh we're looking forward to it. You know, and you know, we'll probably see a familiar foe. Mm -hmm. We always do in the first round or two. You know, I think we have a good shot to maybe host one game. But wherever we go, we're you know we're happy to be in. We got a good team, and uh, we like to think we're going to be a tough out for somebody. Hopefully, we can cover it next week. Congratulations on a good season, Chris. Thank you, Thank you for your Thank time. You. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, guys. So from the field, Lake Orion ends up six and three on the year. Not a disappointing season. I don't think a six and three team with record was expected of this team coming in with all all the the positions they had to replace no I know you're right and and uh, but it hurts that one the way that one happened and and how Lake Orion was was winning up till 259 or 304 whatever it was in, in the in the fourth quarter um, that it hurts even more and, and it hurts even more that it, it's it's as we said in during the, the broadcast it could be the last home game it could be for these seniors and so the the uncertainty of not knowing what happens until Sunday um, it makes it tough right now but uh, uh, there's things to build on there's things to, to build on whether they're playing at home next week or whether they're playing on the road this week there's things that they can build on that uh, will hopefully hopefully catapult them into some, some success in the playoffs so we will wait for selection Sunday see where the Dragons end up if there is a home game, we will cover it for you here on ONTV and the NFHS streaming service. And if not, thank you for watching this season. For our producer, director, Joey Tysick, Joe Johnson, our, our rock on the sidelines. Chris, thank you for everything this year. It's been fun. Thank it's, you. It's another great season. I'm Doug Corliss. Thank you for watching. Good night, everyone.